Welcome back guys, um, this is the ABS Grand Tournament and we're in the, for the second quarterfinal between uh, RDU and Tom 9... Oh, it's actually 6-0. 6-0 to the 9. There's a, a mistake in numbers on the screen. Um, and those two players were not having a easy task yesterday. Right, Solo? Yeah, I think I remember RDU playing uh, particularly well. I can't remember the the exact turns, but I remember some particular lines of play that RDU went went down yesterday that particularly impressed me. Um, if you can maybe refresh my mind, mm -hmm. I think that, I think there was a couple of really really intuitive plays that he made that we didn't spot until afterwards, and then uh, what he did made a lot. of I sense. was really impressed by the game when he was um, when he was playing against the Echo Mage. Mm -hmm. He was really spot on with the overall idea about the matchup, how he should, he should play. He was just lacking the execution during the last turn, and that was what did cost uh, him the game. Wait, that was Tice, right? No, 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 that was RDU. That was RDU. Yes, that was RDU with okay. his patron versus the Echo Mage. And that that was like the only thing that he was oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, yesterday. You're right. yeah, my mistake. Yeah. Uh, but he was playing in particularly well apart from that, apart from that one mistake. Mm. Uh, but Tom had a really exceptional opponent, which was Naria, but he managed to do a 3-0. That was the only sweep, no, second sweep uh, of the day, because the last one was Stansivka yeah. on the Skaka. Mm. Um, and now we'll, they, we'll see those players battle against each other if i recall correctly um tom was not no tom was playing patron because we talked about it extensively no no, no tom wasn't playing patron that's why we were talking about it because we felt oh, that he might yeah. have dropped it you know feeling maybe not as comfortable with the deck as he used to be um so yeah he's yeah, yeah, yeah yeah right but we talked about his strategy of how he is right. playing the patron as a tempo deck yeah which we not necessarily agree uh with right because mm -hmm. why would you play your frothing berserker always on turn three so, it seems like a really odd idea how to play the deck, but he's not sporting this deck in this m m tournament. And uh, so we got the classes, um, the same classes as yesterday. RDU is playing Druid, Paladin, and Warrior, of course. And Tom is bringing a Hunter, Mage, and Paladin. If I recall, the Paladin was a mid-range one. Uh, I think you it, might be right there. Yeah, I think the mage was definitely a tempo mage, and the paladin mm -hmm. was a uh, was a mid range. Yeah, I think you think you're correct. Yeah. So, cool stuff, right? I, I like uh, really casting the mage in general because there are some situations like we just saw in the previous game between Orange and Ecop. If someone <laughs> didn't see that, you should definitely go to the VODs after the tournament and check that game because it was really insane maybe not, not as insane as yesterday's dark bargain from spell yeah <laughs> um yeah it was up there though right the fact there was two layers of random the spell swing and getting the mind vision which is then random again like that that sort of um you know compounds the odds by an order of magnitude so mm -hmm. pretty crazy stuff from the mage but as we know the casino always wins and you always come out on top so uh, <laughs> it is a deck it is a deck that has been doing really really well recently though right it kind of came out of nowhere around the the blizzcon top 40s for eu and na that were mm -hmm. broadcast and suddenly uh, a lot of players have decided to bring it um players like firebat who we talked about yesterday does really extensive testing on his decks um and kind of the, the casters for that tournament were surprised to see much mu uh, as much tempo mage in people's lineups as they did and Tempo Mage performed really well in those qualifiers and has continued to perform well in uh, in the ABS tournament today. So really looks like a, a deck that's making a strong impact on the tournament meta right now. One thing about this this deck I really dislike when I'm playing it, it's kind of unstable when it comes to draws. Kind of a lot... It's kind of unstable? Though, yes, yeah. it's literally unstable yeah. <laughs> also. Uh, but yeah, not consistent, I would say, when it comes to draws. Um, I mean, there's a lot of spells you can draw uh, in your opening hand, which are not exactly the cards you want to see right because uh, it's a minion based deck and the spells are just like a support role yeah for your um for your for your main uh, objective which is to keep minion on the board and gain tempo by chip spells which are top decked and just used to maintain board control right, right. Um, uh, so going into game one now we looks like we have tom on the mid-range hunter and uh, rdu on druid this is classically a, a very good matchup for the for the mid-range hunter and we see Tom is choosing to include a Ram Wrangler in his deck. How do you how do you feel in general about Ram Wrangler? Because it's a card that I've had many discussions with uh, a lot of players in, in my sort of uh, practice circle with. Uh, I love it um, when it comes to casting and streaming and be a viewer. Sure. Of this, uh, like to, to just to witness the 
randomness of this card. But when it comes to um, to be playing this card, I, I, <clears throat> sorry, um, I don't think I like this card at all. It it's swingy. It's a good ward to start with, I would say. Mm -hmm. It's it can be backbreaking for your opponent, or it can be backbreaking for yourself. Because if you can get uh, like a parrot, a one one parrot, or yeah. A even a river crocolisk is not that great when you think about a five mana rule, which you can just play on ten five, right? Yeah. A loader would be better. Most of the situations can be more impactful in the um, uh, in the game. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you get a savannah high main on ten four because you just coined out a ram ram girl, right. right? Or a king crush. Well, you know, those games are usually won by a hunter. Yeah, I actually, just to go into uh, monk, monk Stats land here for a while, I actually did the breakdown of Ram Wrangler just for my, my own personal satisfaction. And the average beast is actually 3.3, 3.7. 3.3, 3.7. That's actually a lot. So, yeah, and then on top of that, there's 38 beasts, and 18 of them have beneficial effects like stealth or stealth or taunt or death rattle or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But like, what that doesn't factor in is when you don't have a beast on the board. Ram Ranger essentially summons a zero zero, right? It just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so I'm still not convinced on the card. But yeah, the overall value when it hits is almost, you know, consistently pretty damn high. Um, so yeah, I, I I think the card is reasonable. But anyway, getting back to the matchup here, the uh, oh, did you see that? Whoa! Did you see that? Well, okay, so in a lot of situations, a Flame Tongue Tome here will be very nice with this Force of Nature, but it's completely irrelevant on this board, and far more important is the fact that the Piloted Shredder just got sniped down by three consecutive knives. <laughs> what were the odds of that happening? Wait, there were four minions and a character on board. So that's like one three in times 125? One five? Yeah. yeah, wow. Five times five times five. One in 125. That's... Actually, really terrible for our team. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and that, look at that. That is one way of putting it, yeah. Uh, are you is now being pushed to use swipe this turn? Mm -hmm. And he can't follow it up by a minion. He can't play a Druid of the Claw. He can't play a Sylvanas because those are being traded away by the board. And Tom has a follow up with Savannah Jaime. Yeah, that's the thing. If he does swipe here, swipe is just potentially game losing because of the follow up high main. He has the Sylvanas to come down and challenge the high main afterwards. But honestly, at that point, it's just too late, right? The high main is going to yeah. hit face. It's going to put him down to 10. It's just going to be so hard for him to climb back onto the board from that point. And Midrange Hunter just has plays for days here with, uh, with his hand. He has the Shredder to follow up the high main later if he wants to. So. Empty board, turn six, high main for mid-range hunter. This is the absolute dream. So Tom just goes ahead and slams it. That's just absolutely terrible for RDU. Mm -hmm. Double Savage Roar in hand. Not necessarily what you want to see at this point of the game. I mean, you have the big game hunter. So if Tom only plays one million with no death rattle effect, you can snipe your own Sylvanas to take the control of the Savannah high main. Yeah, I think we are going to see the yeah, Ram Wrangler Snake Trap here, which uh, really lowers the odds of the uh, Sylvanas stealing any, anything relevant. There's three yeah. nice minions on board, but the board's going to fill up with three snakes as soon as he attacks as well. Um, and because of the death route ordering, um, he does have the potential to steal one of the two two hyenas as well if he attacks into the high main. Yep. So he has to go for a defensive... Oh, he's playing around Freezing Trap in this situation, and a second Snake Trap will kind of be devastating too. And just a, a little smirk on RDU's face there. He knows, mm -hmm. he's, he knows he's lost the uh, the lottery there on the the, the the secrets. Obviously, the play he made was pretty goddamn good against Freezing Trap because uh, he would have had a decent chance of just stealing the high main. But now he has a drastically oh! reduced chance, but he gets it. All right. He gets it. But it's really awful anyway. There's, an, it's there's a bow which deals six damage at least. And there's no additional taunt. So you have three... Five, seven, ten damage and coming next turn. If you go for the most aggressive play, which is bow and hero power, a double shredder seems like a better option, of course. It does. Um, the bright side here for RDU is that he does have consecutive heals here, and he doesn't need to use the Ancient of Laws to draw cards because he does already have double Savage Roar in his hand. So if he yes. can, he can get himself ahead on board using the two extra five five bodies just to stabilize and heal himself for five each turn. Um, he might be able to climb back into this game, but healing himself for 5 here, hero power takes him up to 16, and then at best he can take down one of the Shredders and hope that it's a zero attack minion. 
Uh, so there'll be five, seven coming back at him with the hero power, uh, and then 10, 12 in his opponent's hand. So. How do you have to go face this turn? With the double Sabbath yep. Roar, he can threaten lethal really quickly, mm -hmm. because that's basically 12 damage from hand if you have two minions on board. Yep. And that's yeah, that's enough to kill your opponent next turn. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Going face here does turn out to be game losing because now Tom just has lethal, but it's one of those situations in Hearthstone mm -hmm. where making the best play loses you the game. And one of the one of the skills in really getting better in Hearthstone is recognizing when you made the best play and lost the game because of it. And in those situations, you need to keep making that same best play over and yes. over again. Totally agree with you. And Ardu would definitely make uh, made the same play. I'm sure of it. Uh, even like with with the same out, uh, outcome mm -hmm. with uh, from Tom. So yeah, that was definitely the correct play. Because why would you attack with the Savannah into a pilot shredder just to spawn a new minion and gain nothing from that? Right. You potentially only take one or zero damage off the board mm -hmm. if they get a mm -hmm. nice roll on the on the shredder and you lose out on six damage to face and don't set up lethal for next turn. Like it's just clearly better to attack face there. So even though the play Definitely. was game losing, it was really well played from RDU to recognize that. Mm -hmm. Well, that ridiculous knife juggle RNG was just <laughs> kind of walking. Miracles there. Yeah, it did level out a little bit with the high main steel afterwards, but obviously the odds of that were a one in three compared to the one hundred one in one hundred and twenty-five with the knife juggler. So mm -hmm. um, And uh, then the flame talk door them from the pilot shredder. Yeah. If that many will have any at point, uh, any attack, it would decrease the amount of damage that RDU you would get from it, from those um pesky one one minions on board. That sure. would mean he wouldn't be dead to the exact level uh in the last turn. Sure. Um, so now we see uh, Tom here with the Tempo Mage. Uh, Tom was the guy, yeah, I was just about to say, Tom was the guy playing Fallen Hero in his Tempo Mage, which is very, very interesting to me. Uh, he's just going to go ahead and coin it out here, uh, valuing it over the Sorcerer's Apprentice, even though he has the potential one mana Flame Cannon in his hand. It doesn't do a great deal for him next turn. He's happy to just spend two mana on the Flame Cannon to remove mm -hmm. this Aspirant. So. He also has a um, Arcan Blast in his deck. Yes. And that Very can... True. Imagine that he would have the Arkham Bless right now. Oh, he's trading, what? He's just trading. So next turn, he's just relying on the zero mana Flame Cannon to be a lot of tempo against a Shade of Naxxramas. That's the only thing I can light on, uh, take from this. Yes. So ne next turn, he just plays the second Sorcerer's Apprentice and then Flame Cannon's a Shade for zero. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty decent amount of foresight from Tom. Uh, Flame Cannon... If you played a lot of this deck, you'll know how glorious it is to deal with shades, and he's going to get rewarded here as RDU does have a nice curve and has the shade to follow up. Mm -hmm. That's really well played by Tom here. Mm -hmm. He gets the zero mana mirror image to come down as well. Um, nothing really to protect uh, from here, but um, he just chooses to generate it anyway. I might have yeah. seen him prefer to hold it just in case of something like a Flame Waker top deck or something like that. So. You think so? I mean, he's um, he would like to stay on the curve. Uh, and against the druid, those zero two minions will most likely be on board every single turn, because even a swipe doesn't clear that. And there's a big difference. It's like you, you can say that those mirror images are basically like an, a neutron and a half, because they're really pesky to deal with, and you have to mm, lose two attacks from minions. Right. My argument is that he would probably have got to play them next turn anyway, because um, the Druid was going into four mana. So, you know, swipe on one of the Sorcerer's Apprentice or Keeper on one of the Sorcerer's Apprentice is the worst thing that's going to happen. And then mm -hmm. his follow-up his follow turn could have just been Spell Slinger plus the, um, plus the Mirror Images anyway, but you have the added option of top decking the Flame Waker for additional value. Um, oh, that's true, but a Innervate Force of Nature would be backbreaking. On the double for us, uh, uh, on the double sources apprentice. Sure. Okay. I mean, are you going to play around innovate force of nature though? I don't know. I mean, I think that was the play, right? Not correct, maybe, but that was the thing. That was thinking. Uh, that was the way of thinking from Tom. Sure. Yeah. All right. I can get on board with that. Uh, but now, finally, we have the first kind of slowish turn here for Tom. Uh, Bestial wrath from. Uh, from Spellslinger is not exactly ideal in a in a non-hunter deck. Um, you can still get a beast from Unstable Portal. You like, can. Like, let's say King Crush or Tundra Rhino. Yeah, that can definitely happen. Or the Warhorse, Warhorse, right? 
Yep. Um, five free minion, which can have taunt. Uh, sorry, charge. He chooses to trade in his his one health minion there just to play around second swipe a little bit, and then he's gonna. Um, I don't think it's about leaving the druid at the druid of the claw at, four, at one health this turn because he probably doesn't want to be pinging it anyway. He wants to be playing one of the big cards in his hand. Although now, now the now spell slinger might change that. Yeah. yeah. And definitely will change a lot because you still have one mirror image. Uh, up. Oh, but actually it's. It's great for both players. There's a healing touch mm -hmm. for uh, RDU, and there's a polymorph for any big threat, uh, which will RDU play. And I bet this is the turn when you'll just play a turn six. I mean, not turn six. A six man and a Doctor Boom to pair it up with a Crackle to deal uh, to deal with a minion. Yeah, seems like a pretty solid turn to me. The big game hunter coming into his hand is going to be pretty crucial as well to to deal with the Doctor Boom if that mm -hmm. comes down uh, from Tom. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't trust the RNG. Whoa, okay. I mean, hey. yeah. I mean, it's not maybe the correct line, but it's the safest line. Mm. Is it too safe, though? Is the question. Does he feel that far behind that he needs to make the? Safe I play? think he might really fall behind if he doesn't kill the uh, spell slinger with the crackle. The odds are low, low, but at least you you push your opponent to trade into the emperor that turn. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, uh, so, the value of your big game hunter has been reduced a little bit since you're now only big game huntering a 7-3, but still. So what about Azurdrake first? And you can leave the... Uh, maybe That's you'll just draw strange. a breath? Yeah, what else does he want to play? Yeah, you almost certainly should have played the Azurdrake first here, right? Um, I think even if you draw Wrath... Um, it might be the play anyway, because what else are you going to big game hunter? I guess Ronin has come into the deck now, so yeah, there is some merit to holding on to big game hunter. I don't like the healing touch at all this uh, this turn. There's no reason to play it. You're not dead at all. You and... want to try and like bait your opponent into going yes. more all in, yeah. Exactly. If you're like getting kind of lower on damage, you can bait your opponent to play damage spells to your face, so you then counter that by playing the healing touch with like no way of your opponent, you know. Dealing with this. I think from RDU's perspective, it, the way he's looking at the game was like, okay, I just win next turn with combo anyway, so let's mm -hmm. just make this game as safe as possible this turn and just play any around any ridiculous worlds where I do die from from just straight up burn. Okay, yeah, maybe maybe that makes sense. But I would like to sit on the innovate, you know, because it can create some weird scenarios, especially with one savage, one mana savage roar in your sure. hand, right? Yeah. So. It's 1-1 one, one between RDU and Tom. Uh, the Temple Mage fails for the first time when it had a decent opener, I would say. Mm, it did. It was really that one turn where he had nothing to do on turn 5. Uh, the Bestial Wrath came into his hand from the mm -hmm. um, Spell Slinger and just didn't really give him any options. So he was just sat with uh, basically a ping pass turn on turn 5. And then uh, he was still denied being able to play his big stuff out on curve because he was forced to ping a Druid of the Claw the turn after on turn 6. Um, and if you if you do slow down like that for one turn against a, a druid, that's the turn where druid will look really look to punish you and start to to flip the switch and be aggressive back against you. And uh, that's exactly what RD managed to do. So again, yeah. re really well played by him. And I will be jumping into the Temple Mage versus Paladin matchup. And this is favoring um, usually the Temple Mage because of solely because of those um, Flame Wakers. Yeah, things like Flame Waker, Coin, Arcane Missiles, or something is just way too destructive. Uh, it can, even if it's a ball clear, it can be answered usually on curve by the uh, True Silver. Um, but at that point, it may have already got too much value, even if you can catch up with it. And we do see mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. spell, the uh, Flame Waker being brought into Tom's hand, opening hand here. But you know, no Mana Worms, no Mad Scientist, nothing ready to play early. So he's going to fall a little bit behind early, unless the uh, the Unstable Portal is kind to him here. Let's say an Edwin van Cleef. I'll be insane. But at the same time, don't you want to? S no, you have to play it. Yeah, I think there's no do. reason to hold on it. Well, sure. I mean, that's, that's decent, right? It's basically Edwin an armor. Yeah, it's basically an armor smith that doesn't heal you. You know. Yeah, but it plays around uh, abusive surgeons. Yep. Yeah, totally reasonable. Um, but yeah, g generally, like the one-four body when you're playing Patron Warrior is a lot more important early than the armor gain. So. Having a 1-4 is pretty interesting. I'm surprised that he chose not to play it there. He might save it all the way into denying a Mysterious Challenger, maybe? Is his thought process here? Mm -hmm, since mm -hmm. he can play it for free? No, he's just going to play it out this turn. Oh, Commanding Shout. Ooh. 
That's interesting interaction in when both decks rely on minions heavily. Right. Hmm. It certainly is. Um, so, he's going to put the Weblord down to three health here using his weapon attack. So it looks like he is planning to, to chew through that at some point, maybe setting up a Consecrate for next turn. Because uh, now he can Consecrate and just attack that again with the weapon and clear off the 3-4 with some of his tokens. I found it interesting that Tom is not attacking into the 1-1s one at all. I mean, you just played a Flame Waker. Mm. You want to push your opponent to use both Hunted Creepers to destroy the Flame Waker mm -hmm. with the board, right? So, uh, in this situation, you will have more targets for a second Flame Waker. Yeah. Uh, it will work fine anyway, because uh, RD will be popping both Hunted Creepers anyway. Yeah. Which he... I found interesting, because he had the option to keep one. He did, yeah, but having just seen the Flame Waker played, maybe he's not scared of the second one. He knows Flame Waker. I think, I think when someone plays one Flame Waker with no effect, when you're playing a Spell Slinger already, uh, when you played already a Spell Slinger, it just means telegraphs. I have a second one. You think it's head. more likely they have it? Okay. Yeah, yeah it just means it's, it's so reckless to play right. the, uh, the first Flame Waker with no, eff with no real effect on the board when it's the MVP card against, um, against Secret Paladin. Right. I think it's just telegraphs. We do not know that. I mean, you mentioned the spell slinger. Um, he couldn't have played a spell slinger that turn because the Nerubar Wedlord was in play. So, you know, maybe he did just value playing out a minion on curve. We know that Tom is that sort of player, but I, I kind of agree with you. Generally, when you see really powerful cards used for no value, like sometimes you'll just see like a patron warrior just put a Warsong commander on the board against an aggressive deck, and it's like, well, he probably has the second one then, and he just doesn't need that first one. Yep. Um, but he's going to choose Agreed. not to go for the, the Flame Waker here. Which I agree with. One Flame Waker and one Frostbolt isn't going to make too big of an impact on this board. Um, and it's pretty susceptible to something like True Silver or Blessing of Kings. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with uh, him just drawing some more cards this turn and trying to, to stack up the resources he needs for the big Flame Waker clear with, with mm -hmm. you know cheaper, mm -hmm. cheaper spells, especially something like Arcane Missiles. Ooh. A tempo dead shot. I found it. I found that interesting. I mean, it's really powerful with the advanced and competitive spirit at the same time because it basically denies a uh, a flame waker. Mm -hmm. Does it deny it? I mean, you get first the random randomized damage from. No, you get it after the first spell. So if Tom plays haunted, uh, haunted, flame waker, plays the commanding shot first. Kills a minion and then can follow it up with a frostbolt to a avenged minion. That's a pretty nice clear. Yeah, that actually that sounds pretty oh. reasonable. Oh, he goes only for one spell. Oh. That's kind of far fetched. And he hits oh. twice to the face. That's even better for him. I mean, that's better for him because he he's not proccing the avenge. Uh, he didn't actually play avenge that turn, did he? I think. Oh no! Uh, he oh okay, no, he did. No, no, he did. The Avenge oh, yeah, was he green. Did. Okay. It, it was weird. From from the other perspective, the Avenge was green in his hand, so it looked like it was uh, it was playable. But once wow. it switched back to his turn, and yeah, he... mysterious challenger just comes down and more or less locks out the game here, right? How do you come yeah, from this? Definitely. The the low tip is just like a, you know, just a bonus here. Yeah. I play low tip and I sealed all those spells you have in your temple mage. So you can make a comeback, you can rely on those spells, maintaining board control up to your play minions. So, yeah, that's just sealing a deal. And honestly, what 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 could Tom even be looking at this turn? Because even if you had like a fireball just to snipe down the 6-6, six, six, that doesn't help you because it just comes back as a 6-1. And you can ping it off and that's your entire turn. And then the, one of the other minions has got buffed by Avenge in the meantime. So, it's pretty difficult to make sort of any sort of dent in this board without having a board presence already. Mm -hmm. And there's a Repentance also on board, yep. so you have to play around that. So, yeah, you have to play the Fallen Hero, paying one of the two dudes, but that leaves a Avenge uh, on the board, which then has to hit the... <laughs> then just has to hit the Spectral Spider, so you can play the Flame Cannon. Yeah, so you can either take the one in three flame cannon here, or yeah, make this play, which is just freeze the biggest minion on the board and hope that that's mm -hmm. good enough. I don't know if he's playing a flame strike, but this looks like a play that's playing to a top deck flame strike. And uh, lower Feb is just going to put an end to any of that nonsense whatsoever. Yeah, no shenanigans from mage here. No value from minions. Uh, sorry, from spells. 
And that's and, it. Yeah. That's, that's it. RDU takes a 2-1 lead over Tom. And um, he's left with uh, Warrior, right? Yes. Yep. And Warrior will be facing a Mage deck and a Paladin deck, which now depends on a few builds of patrons that we saw. If RDU plays Double Fear War X, uh, this puts a higher win ratio uh, for the Warrior against the Mage, which might be really impactful, I would say. The, the weapons might be really impactful because that's what you want to get against those minion based decks. Yeah, for sure. Especially when there's no Neutrons, no Snow Truggers to limit your usage of weapons. Yeah, Un Unstable Goal is another very important card. It's just the absolute best minion you can possibly proc uh, Mirror Entity with. But I don't think we've actually seen Mirror Entities in, in Tom's deck. He might actually be playing the Secretless version. Because I don't think we've, yeah. we've seen Mad Scientist. And he's playing the Fallen Heroes instead, which I guess no, is a no, direct no. replacement for the Mad Scientist. There was, there was no Mad Scientist either, so yep. yeah. And RD is playing the Dread Corsair version, so most likely one for your War X. Yeah, and probably means only one or no shield blocks as well. That that Would tends it... to be that version. Mm -hmm. oh, what I find interesting, well, how <laughs> three of that. <laughs> <laughs> what I find it's, uh, interesting is that the fact that when people play Dread Corsair, they tend to cut the Fury War X, when actually Dread Corsair has a synergy with yeah. Fury War X. It's weird, right? I mean, it is yeah. in your deck just for the insane tempo that you get when you Death Spite something, mm -hmm. um, or just for the additional burst and the additional free minion on board to buff up like a frobbing combo when you have second swing of, of Death Spite up. But yeah, it does seem slightly bizarre that you, you, know, you put this weapon synergy card in your deck and then you cut a weapon to make room for it, so... Yeah, exactly. And now, the I mean, the, the uh, fl uh, flame lands is not exactly the type of spell you want to get against a patron. There's no target which is basically bigger than four HP in this deck, apart from Emperor, Emperor, which is the biggest minion, and you can deal with that with almost everything because even Flame Cannon deals with it easily, right? Yep. Yeah, Flame Cannon does okay against it. Hmm. Um, but, you know, it, 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 if you don't have the Flame Cannon option, Flame Lance will be a nice little option for you to not have to spend a, a Fireball on it. Um, at least you get uh, get to use a card that can't go face. Look at that. Death Spite on turn 4 when he's already frozen for one turn. Hmm. Still, nice turn just to drop a Dread Corsair for 0 mana and lock down some damage incoming, unless there will be a spell to deal with it. Yep, I mean, he does have the Flame Lance, but Flame Lance for four mana on this thing does not look like what he wants to be doing. Uh, no. So it looks like this is just going to be a Flame Way of Garakane Intellect turn. And if that's the case, he probably wants to trade first, right? Yes, yes, got, yes, definitely. You're, you're never, never going to hit three shots since there's only two. Uh, you have to trade anyway yeah. into this minion, so why would you lose damage, right? Oh, he I'm goes not super go greedy. Interesting. That's very interesting because imagine if there would be like double, um, double uh, AOE damage right now. I mean, I would definitely use the Warson Command of Unstable Gold this turn. What do you think, Sokol? Um, Warson Commander Unstable Ghoul. Yeah, it looks reasonable. Um, but you know, you could do with the the second charge of Death Bite being up. I don't think you're too worried. I mean, if everything does go wrong, you have the the Tree of Life in your hand for an emergency uh, reset at the end of the game. So I don't think you're too worried about taking a little bit of damage. And you can just go for a bit of value over time here. Just play the, uns the Unstable Ghoul. Uh, oh, I'm surprised he's actually whirlwinding here, but I guess it does let him use the Battle Rage. But honestly, I would have wouldn't have minded using the Unstable Ghoul just to get one damage on everything and just clearing it up with the Death Spite next turn. Okay, yeah, sounds like a good plan. Also, um, he has to remember that he used one Armor Smith already, and that's very crucial when it comes to life gain. But he got the second one in the Battle Rage, so that kind of changes the, the whole changes the whole plan. He still needs any AOE damage that can be dealt with, uh, that can deal um, damage to the armors with and some, uh, some minions, so let's say, like patrons. Uh, Mirror Image is an important card against weapon class in general. They basically act like an Neutron, uh, which has to be dealt with two attacks from minions or just with, you know, two strikes with weapons, which steals a lot of tempo from from the warrior and yeah well that's the 
That's the main strategy of the Temple, uh, Temple Mage in general. Hmm. Are you... Is he forced to use the Death Spider here? Might kinda. First Warstone Commander will be probably used just as a means, uh, as a mean to deal with the, um, with those pesky mirror images. So I don't blame him at all. You can clear the board here and just maintain board control. Oh, that's interesting. He will sacrifice the Taskmaster. Actually, that's way better than just Taskmastering your armor smith, what I'm talking about. I mean, your armor smith would be a free one, so it can be pink next turn. So that's definitely a better option to have the armor smith full, with, full with full health on board. Then a 3-1 uh, armor smith and a 2-2 two, two, and a 2-2 two, two taskmaster. Yeah, for sure. You just preserve the full t the long-term value of your armor smith, and you you uh, make it so that both of these cards now demand an actual card as an answer from your opponent. And Tom is just left here with a pretty miserable-looking hand. Uh, none of these cards really uh, fit the purpose here. You know, arcane blast on the warsong commander, along with a ping, seems reasonable. But then you're starting to stack up the armor by not dealing with the armor smith so mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. uh, i don't know frost you know in the same time like frost bolting so you're giving up a lot of your reach it's just he need he wanted some sort of minion here to play alongside a frost bolt and then he wouldn't feel so bad about the situation but without like a decent minion to play on curve it looks like he is just gonna have to frost bolt and pass yeah that feels really bad yeah. i mean that's that's the problem with the deck that we talk about like it lacks um Sometimes it just lacks a convincing draw to seal the game, especially when you're lacking on minions and just get those support spells. And Alchem Blast is... Alchem Blast and Flame Lens are basically the same spell. They they deal damage to minions. They, right. they are support spells. Yeah, he would have loved to see that mechanical Yeti last turn to be able to play it alongside the, uh, the Frostbolt. So it comes a, a turn late here, but he does get to finally develop a minion on the board. It challenges mm -hmm, the Armorsmith mm -hmm. quite nicely, and we actually see in... in uh, RDU's hand that there's no real answer for this mechanical yay, so it might be able to start getting some aggression going. Yeah, but at the same time, you have Tree of Life in your hand, yeah. so you don't necessarily worry about the damage incoming. The, the better yeah. for him that he has armor, because the armor is being dealt with first, so the Tree of Life has no effect on you losing the armor. That's very true. The armor is actually reducing the overall value of the Tree of Life, but I think because of the Tree of Life security, he's kind of just happy to, to take 12 damage from this mechanical Yeti here, if that's how it ends mm -hmm, up. Mm -hmm. um, with the, 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 the two weapon attacks and one turn of it potentially swinging for face, but I think uh, Tom is forced to, to commit to one of these minions here. You really can't let that Acolyte compound cards here, right? If it if it starts to draw another card and then maybe the, the Battle Rage is top decked, then you know you're just going to get blown out of this game by card draw. So yep. lim limiting the minions on your opponent's board and limiting the card draw is uh, usually the way to go in this situation against Patron, because if you can card starve them... Yeah, going as far as to use the Flame Lance here, I absolutely don't hate this play at all. Because um, if you can card starve a Patron in general, their top decks are pretty weak individually. You know, it's a combo deck, so they're looking to activate powerful chains between two or three cards in their hand. So mm -hmm, if they're top decking mm -hmm. individual cards, um, then they normally don't do too well. Yep, that's very true. Now, are they using like a spot where he, whether he uh, can play the Friendly Berserker without any kind of threat most of the time from uh, Tom to deal with the Frothing Berserker? And that's something you want to see almost every single time because there's one or two from here already, already being played. There's only one uh, one card that can deal, two cards that can deal with the Throating Berserker right now. It's a fi uh, Fireball or a second Frostbolt. Right. Or a Freezing Coolant from the part. Okay. Sure. Um, and that's just, you know, like a not a permanent solution. Yeah, and um, we definitely. Emperor, although it's a very very powerful effect, not what you're looking for here. Only one card in hand, which is a one mana spare part, which is not a big mm -hmm, deal to mm -hmm. get discounted. And what you really needed that turn was a way to uh, to deal with the frothing berserker. Is is he going to tree a life here? I think he has to. Uh, 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 the problem is I mean, he can't really trade with the emperor because if he trades with the emperor, he has no more threats on on board and in hand. Hmm. And if he uses the Tree of Life, your minions are, are healed too. That's very true. And then you can... No, you can't use the 
Ah, that's so bad you can't use the inner rate on the Warzone Commander, so he will trade with the Emperor. No, you're still with damage short. But yeah, I guess maintaining the, the Warzone Commander is probably the most important part of this. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he, yeah. he, he does still reset the situation. He is still winning the race because he gets to attack after using the, the Tree of Life. So the onus is still on um, on Tom to trade. And yeah, by healing up the Warsong Commander, he then retains that on the board for if he top decks something like a, a Grim Patron, which will go really yes. nicely with that inner rage in his hand. And I just wanted to say that Tom might have, a, look, you know, like a comeback in this game if you would top deck an Antonidas or Ronan, an example. Mm -hmm. Or even Dr. Boo. But. In this situation, he has to trade the Emperor into the Protein Berserker, and then he has to play the just Man of Them on board without any, anything. If are the top decks a patron, this is probably a game. Yep, almost certainly will be. And this is kind of the double punish of uh, playing these decks that um, have to play the early game to be aggressive in the mm -hmm. early turns, but mm -hmm. then they play the big threats later. Um, the thing is, if you miss your early game, you kind of get punished twice because not only do you have that early game for the early pressure, you're then much more likely to draw it later on instead of a big threat like an Antonidas or a Doctor Doom. Yep. That's the um, problem with the density of, the, of this deck and the value of the cards presented in it. Yeah, miserable decision here for Tom. And wow, he's actually going to uh, okay. um, put a little bit of trust here in uh, drawing something off the top of his deck next turn to deal with this Frothing Berserker, because I don't think RDU is trading here. No, no way he's trading. The Emperor is just a 5-3 body. Doesn't have necessarily any value at all. Oh, look at that. Okay, now no way in hell do you trade. That's just setting up lethal next turn now. Yep. So your opponent is now forced to trade. You know that there is no one card that he's going to draw that's going to do the the seven, the twenty-seven necessary damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, uh, twenty-five. Sorry, uh, unstable portal can perhaps do things, but it's going to be pretty spectacular. Yeah, that's that's not that's quite good not enough. quite good enough yet. Um. I and mean... you can trade with both of the minions because you can't use the time reminder to buff your amount of them, but that's actually a short, short of damage anyway. And now if you play the Mukla... Hmm. Yeah, if you play the Mukla, you just you... give the the Emperor a good Seven. trade into the That's Mukla 9 damage, the one of lethal. <sighs> I mean, Mukla, Time Rewinder, Mukla Concede looks like a fairly solid play. <laughs> I will have to play Mukla anyway. Without the Mukla, you are not doing anything this turn. Yep. That sounds horrible, so you have to play it and hope that RDU will trade, which will not happen, of course, because RDU is not threatened by the board at all, no. and he just wants to deal enough damage to finish the game with a top deck weapon, an example. Yeah, absolutely. Tom's thinking really hard, just going through various calculations of his outs and his opponent's outs if he plays Mukla, but I think he's ended up with the right conclusion here that he just has to play it to win. And, Battle uh, Rage. Oh, wow, what a top deck. So two draws to hit lethal here. Uh, and no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> so any weapon or a second Warsong Commander, if there's still one left, would have been lethal that turn. Yes. Um, but I guess just in a rage, execute, tidies up this board quite quite nicely. And then how do you feel about Acolyte and putting the bananas on the Acolyte? Because you don't really need the extra damage from the the Warsong Commander. The from, yeah, from the Emperor. Uh, yeah, sorry, from the, from the Emperor. I think you should just go face and deal damage. Yeah. And you can put then one banana on the Emperor and one banana on the Acolyte of Pain. Before the attack. Okay, if you're trading, it's definitely better to put it on the Acolyte, though, for sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, which he does. But yeah, I mean, going face there and setting up lethal is perfectly viable as well. This is a, a thing I've talked about a lot on my stream. Is like people have different styles of winning one games, and this is almost certainly a one game, and it's just a matter of, you know, picking a particular line. Either you're going to try and grind your opponent out, or you're just going to try and end the game quickly and reduce the amount of outs they get to see out of their deck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, RDU here seems to be going for the uh, the grindy. No! Oh, no, slam your own acolyte! Yeah, slam your acolyte. Why you do that? Well, he got, he got okay. the chain draws anyway. Yeah, let's just keep chaining card draw. Seems fine. <laughs> so you don't care. Fine. Yeah, you don't care about the Antonidas at all. Oh, maybe you do. I mean, in this situation, just go face and next uh, next thing just steps by the opponent to the death, right? Spell Slinger Flame Strike? Nope. 
no such thing. He's going to try it one more time, but I think with four mana, there's not a great deal he can get that affects this board and keeps. Frost Nova? Ah, Frost Nova would have done the job. Unstable portal! Into oh. World Ignite, but not enough mana to use it. So, that's it. That wraps up the game. It was kind of silly ending, right? Yeah. This was like <laughs> top deck wars uh, between Patron and Temple Mage, which usually. Temple Mage is an advantage because he has big hitting minions in his deck and Patron relies on cards like Inner Rage, Whirlwinds, and Slams, which are not necessarily the best when you top deck them. I mean, Slam is not that bad, but Inner Rage and the Whirlwind are practically horrible as top decks. So, Ardu takes the game, 3-1, so he advances to the semifinals, um, but he's not playing against Orange because we had to skip a one match and place it later into the schedule. So um, let me check the brackets. And if you want yeah. to check the brackets, type exclamation mark bracket, which links you to the abusgaming.com site of the tournament, when you can see a neatly made bracket uh, with information about it. So um, RDU advances to the semifinal against a winner of a match between Kaldi and Stan Sivka. But before that, we'll see the the game we were missing last time. So Firebird versus Cypher will be uh, next. Subtle, anything to add from your side? No, just a really fun series there. A lot of uh, a lot of tempo mage shenanigans happening, which again seems to be the the theme of the day so far. Lots of crazy tempo mage games. But again, RDU following up with his strong play yesterday, more strong play today. So looking forward to the next match, and we will be back after a quick five minute break. Don't go anywhere. 